Yeah. And I think, I think uh, for our for our second question, you touched on something during that answer, which I think is is super important. Where it comes to the the question of capital gains, and really our second question relates to you know our property investors and people looking into property, and uh, what taxes do property investors actually need to look out for, um, you know, in their deals. Sure. So I'll keep I'll keep this one relatively short because I think what we can do is we can start expanding on them. Uh, week by week as we go along. So just to kind of give a general overview, and I get this question a lot, because, and especially stems off a very simple question that people ask, going, well, do I need to pay tax on rental income, right? And it seems something intuitive, but it's not necessarily intuitive because people don't quite understand how rental income works, what type of business it is. There's all this conversation about, oh, but residential accommodation, certain taxes don't need to be paid. So there is this level of confusion. So simple answer is that as a property investor, you're, you're a business, simple as that, right? And as any business in South Africa, you have to pay tax. Um, so rental comes in, you have to pay tax on the rental. So that's that's uh, like the kind of the question number one answer. Whether it's residential or commercial is inconsequential. Income tax, which is basically the tax you pay after you make certain deductions. So now it kind of touches on the next thing, uh, income tax. So you get income, you make certain deductions. So like, for instance, the interest that you're paying the bank your property rates, your um, the municipal expenses, it, it, the repairs, et cetera, et cetera, get deducted, commercial and residential. Once you deduct it, you're going to pay tax, uh, uh, tax to stars, right? So this is your income tax component. How do you normally pay it? And we can go into detail on how income tax works, but in short, you pay it through provisional tax. Remember, you as an employee pay, pay right? Pay is just basically a way of getting money to SARS on a monthly basis so you don't get a huge shock at the end of the year and now you don't have cash to fund it. So employers are obliged to keep a certain portion back pay to SARS and at the end of the year as the employee, you can go recon what you actually owe SARS and you can claim a refund or you can pay in. So pay in itself technically isn't a tax. It's, or it's almost a withholding provision so that tax can be calculated properly and there can be a refund. That's really what the intention of pay is, right? Now, with a property investor, that's not the case. Property investor, now you're not an employee. Technically, you're now running a business. So if you're going to pay tax on the rental income that comes in, you're going to need to do it the way that most businesses do it, which is provisional tax, right? And that works differently. So we can have a conversation on that later, but yes, to answer the question, tax has to be paid. What other tax? That commercial properties, that has to be paid. Commercial includes short-term accommodation like Airbnbs and the like. So you have to pay VAT on that. VAT is a, um, a residential property, purely residential, long-term residential, exempt from VAT. So you're good. There's a little in between scope here where we start dealing with commercial accommodation, but I'm not going to go into that now because it's case law and it's a whole discussion, right? Uh, so that, that is crucial. When you sell a property, guys, remember, if you're flipping, it's income tax because it's trading stock. It's, it's tantamount to you owning a store and selling packets of chips and buying and selling, buying and selling. You're doing the same with properties. Just because it's a bigger sale, just because you do one as opposed to 50 packets of chips, doesn't matter. Trading stock, income tax, whatever profit you make, you pay income tax. If you do, however, sell the property, but it was a capital asset difference, capital asset you hold, you had an intention of keeping it and deriving fruits from it, so basically some sort of rental income, and then you decide to sell. That's capital. If you buy to sell, not capital, revenue, right? Now, capital in nature, if you do have it, you hold those rental income, you sell it on to somebody else, the difference there is no longer revenue. It's now capital gain, and you pay capital gains, right? Why this distinction? Capital gains typically tend to be lower than income tax, right? As a rule of thumb. Not necessarily all the, uh, all the time. If you structure your affairs properly, you might be able to, to uh, maneuver and, and you know, pay less here or pay less there. But general rule, capital gains a lot less than paying income tax. So, oh, well, income tax like your normal tax. So if it is capital in nature, you're obviously going to opt to, to pay the capital gains. 
So those, those are the three predominant types of taxes that you pay. This obviously excludes property taxes and rates and things like that, but that's a different story. So that's not really on the scope of uh, where we deal with. That's a municipal tax charge for you being owner of the property based on your municipal valuation. So that's not really like how tax planning works. That There's very little planning actually happens around that. Um, yeah, and then... Like in the following weeks, we can have more in-depth conversations on, on each, I suppose. Great. Looking forward to it. Yeah. Cool. Okay. Awesome. Thanks so much, Nick. Thanks very much, Bruno. Cool. So you go uh, go get some rest. You've got a big day tomorrow. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. And we'll uh, uh, yeah, see you tomorrow. And yeah, we'll see the viewers next week. Okay. Thanks, Bruno. Cool. I'm good. Enjoy. Cheers. Bye.